So let's see today's delicious Kerala style chicken. This is super simple to make. It has very few ingredients and the end result is simply delicious. So we're going to start by marinating the chicken. So I have 200 grams of boneless chicken breast. I've cut it into cubes. To that I'm going to add 2 tablespoons of curd. Next I'm going to add half a teaspoon of turmeric or haldi powder. Next goes in 1 teaspoon of salt. Now mix all of this really well together and set it aside for at least 30 minutes. Now I'm using boneless chicken uh, breast but you can also use chicken on the bone. So we're going to marinate this for 30 minutes. Now here I've taken five medium-sized onions and cut them, you know, thinly slice them like you would for a biryani. And then I'm just going to deep fry them till they're nice and crispy like this. And once they're at room temperature, you're just going to crush them and set them aside. This really elevates the flavor of this dish. So now that our chicken is well marinated, let's start with today's recipe. So in a pan, I've added 2 tablespoons of oil. We're going to cook this on a low to medium flame. Now once the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to add a paste made out of 4 cloves of garlic and half an inch of ginger. It needs to be a coarsely ground paste. Now fry this really well. Once that is fried really nicely, I'm going to add two green chilies that I've cut into halves and fry the chili also really well because it then flavors the oil also very well. So fry the chilies till they get a little bit of a whitish tinge and you get the aroma also of the ginger, garlic and the chili. Now I'm going to add about 8 to 10 curry leaves. You can chop the curry leaves fine or you can add them whole. Fry the curry leaves also till they're a little bit crispy. And then I've taken one medium sized tomato and chopped it up and I'm going to add that. So fry the tomato also well. Now I'm going to add two teaspoons of coriander powder or dhania powder. I leave a recipe of how I make all my powder masalas at home. And then I'm going to add half a teaspoon of homemade garam masala. You can use the ready made one. I leave a link of how I prepare that too. And I'm also going to add 2 teaspoons of Kashmiri red chilli powder. Then I'm going to cover and cook this on a low, or you know, cook it for about a, a 1 minute till the tomatoes are nice and soft and uh, really nicely, easily crushable. That's very important that the tomatoes are nicely cooked. Now once the tomatoes are nicely cooked, I'm going to add 2 teaspoons of roasted fennel powder or soft powder. So I've just taken, uh, you know, soft and just roasted it, dry roasted it. And once it's cool, I've just added it to a mixer and made it fine, a groundly, grounded fine. And then I'm going to add 1 teaspoon of pepper powder. Even the pepper powder, I've made it at home. I'll leave a link for that. And now I'm going to add this marinated chicken to the dish. And we're going to mix it in really well with the bagar. And again, I'm going to cover and cook this for 5 minutes on a very low flame, stirring in intervals. And now you can see that the chicken is a little bit cooked. Now we have to add a little bit of salt to taste, so about a teaspoon. Because we already marinated uh, it with salt, so just add about half a teaspoon to one teaspoon. And now we're going to add the crushed fried onions. We're going to mix all of this really well together. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of coriander, chopped fine coriander leaves or kothimbir, about one fourth of a cup. Mix that in well too. And then we're just going to cover and cook this on a low flame for another five minutes till everything really comes together very well. And after five minutes, our dish is all ready. This is super, super delicious and it goes so well with rotis or naans or chapati or some dal and rice or even with some neem dosa. So do give this recipe a try guys and I'll catch you soon in my next video. Bye!
let's get started with today's recipe. Now, first, I'm going to marinate about half a kilo of chicken cut into small pieces with some turmeric, salt, and some vinegar. If you don't have any vinegar, you can also use tamarind pulp or tamarind. Uh, you know, soak some tamarind and use the juice of that uh, squeezed out tamarind. This I'm going to marinate for at least an hour. Now, these are some wet ingredients which we are going to be grinding into a, a kind of a chutney or a paste. So, let me just take you through them. This is one large onion. This is one cup of uh, fresh coriander chopped. These are a few uh, uh, garlic pods, an inch of ginger, few curry leaves and few green chilies. Now, all ingredients with their exact measurements will be in the description box below. So, you can go to the description box and see that. So, now all we're going to do is just put all of this together in your blender or mixer. Add just about one fourth cup of water and we're going to grind this to a very coarse paste. Now, next come all our dry spices and we're going to roast each of these dry spices separately and then transfer them to a plate and then we're going to grind them to a very fine powder. So, here I have some coriander or dhania. This is some cumin or jeera. These are a few red chilies. This is some mustard seeds, uh, a cinnamon, a few uh, peppercorns, some two pods of cardamom or lychee. This is some poppy seeds which we also call as cuscus. This is cloves or lavang. These are some few methi seeds or fenugreek seeds. So now I'm going to dry roast each of these spices individually. And then I've kept a plate, a steel plate or a glass plate. And once you roast them, you've got to transfer them to that plate. And then we're going to take all of that into our mixer or blender and dry them. I mean, grind them to a very fine powder. Now you'll know when your spices are ready because you'll get this beautiful aroma of each of the spice. So you know that the spices are nicely roasted. So do this roasting on a very low to medium flame and keep stirring the spices because otherwise they will get burned and then our recipe will not really taste all that good. So once you finish roasting each of the spice, we're going to and roast them very well because this is also, you know, this adds the extra flavor to this beautiful dish. So these are some cloves of lavang or um, cloves, about an inch of cinnamon or dalcini, some few methi or fenugreek seeds, this is mustard and cuscus or poppy seeds as we call them. Now for the cardamoms or the elaichi, I've just peeled them. Don't throw away the peel. You can always use that in your tea when you're making your tea along with some ginger. It tastes fantastic. So now I've roasted everything and now I've just put them into my dry blender and I've ground them to a very fine powder. And this is our spice powder ready. So here our chicken is marinated. Here our paste is ready and our spice powder. So we can begin with today's recipe. So I've just taken about two tablespoons of oil and I've just added the chicken in the green paste. And we're just going to mix both of these well together and fry the chicken a bit as well as the paste and you'll get this beautiful aroma of this lovely green paste this and then you're going to add the spice powder that we ground and friends the aroma of this dish is just amazing you'll know when you make it and then we're just going to add about a cup of water because we want to cook the chicken well. So we're just going to cover and cook this for at least 20 to 25 minutes on a very low flame. And then you'll get this semi-dry kind of, uh, uh, you know, a mixture. If you want to have it a gravy, then you can, uh, you know, keep some more water. But this tastes really good when the semi-dry uh, consistency. And then you can enjoy this with some fresh pao, with some rice, with some chapatis or poris. It's just great. So thanks SD for this beautiful recipe.
let's see the ingredients. This is one tablespoon of cumin or jeera powder, one tablespoon of coriander or dhania powder, half a tablespoon of pepper powder, one tablespoon of Kashmiri red chili powder, three-four tablespoon of tandoori masala, three-four tablespoon of garam masala, three-four tablespoon of red chili powder, two tablespoons of ginger garlic paste, half a tablespoon of lemon juice and two tablespoons of thick curd. This is one tablespoon of kanda lasun masala which is optional and I'm using 400 grams of boneless chicken breast cut into medium sized pieces. We're also going to need some kasuri methi, some cumin seeds and some besan or chana flour. So let's begin by marinating the chicken for this recipe. Now I've taken the chicken in a large mixing bowl and I'm going to add exactly half of all the powder masalas. So uh, whatever I have uh, given, I'm just going to add like taken, like suppose I've taken one tablespoon of coriander powder, I'm going to add half a tablespoon to the uh, chicken and I'm going to use the rest for the bhuna. Now all the ingredients with the exact measurements are in the description box below. So you can go down just below this video and check that out too. So we're going to use half the quantity of all the powder masalas listed below. Then I'm going to add, now this tandoori masala is easily available in stores. It's called chicken tandoori masala or tandoori masala. Now I'm going to add also half the quantity of the ginger garlic paste. I'm going to add some lemon juice and we are going to now add the curd, some salt to taste before that and I'm also going to add some dahi or some curd or some thick yogurt. Now I have a recipe of how to make homemade dahi or yogurt. It's very simple. I'll leave a link below or if I forget to do that, just uh, type uh, how to make dahi or curd Akshita's recipes in the YouTube search button and it will take you to my recipe. And now we're going to the most, most important part is we're going to mix everything really well together because we want all those flavors to really go into the chicken and uh, you know marinate each and every piece really really well so you can use a spoon you can even go in with your hands and then we're going to cover this and we're going to set this aside for at least one hour you can keep this overnight in your refrigerator otherwise you can just set it out a normal temperature for one hour now we're going to make the bhuna for that i've taken six tomatoes medium-sized tomatoes just start off the top and I'm going to now de-seed them. This is very important for the recipe because we want a very, very smooth puree. We don't want any seeds in it. We don't want any lumps of tomato. So, and then I'm going to just chop it up into these small cubes because that becomes easier for me to, uh, you know, uh, grind into a very smooth paste. I'm going to do the same thing with the onions. I've taken five medium-sized onions and I've chopped them up into cubes. And then I'm going to make it into a very fine paste. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the tomatoes and make it into a very, very fine paste like this. So there should be no lumps in your tomato paste. And I'm going to transfer, you know, both the paste to two different bowls because that makes it easier to work with. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of ghee to a heavy bottom pan. Here I'm using a pressure pan, but you can use any heavy bottom pan. Now, once our ghee is nice and hot, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of cumin seeds or jeera. Once they begin to pop, I'm going to add my onion paste. Do be careful because it does splutter. So lower your flame and, you know, just stand away from the gas and then you add your paste. Then I'm going to add the remaining ginger garlic paste and I'm going to fry this very, very well till it becomes into a very thick paste like this. Then we're going to add this kanda lasun masala and we're going to add all the remaining powder masalas, all the other half that we had, uh, you know, uh, you used half for the marinade. So the other half, we're going to add all the powder masalas to this onion paste. We're going to fry this really well. Now I'm going to add some salt to taste. Now remember we added salt to the chicken also when we marinated it so just go easy on the salt. Now once that's done I'm going to add the tomato paste and I'm going to saute everything really well. So this bhuna basically you know you want your paste to be really well 
cooked well sauteed because all the flavor lies in this puna and you know you have to really fry it very very well so i'm going to cover and cook this for 3 minutes now in the meantime i'm just going to take a pan and roast about 2 tablespoon of besan or chana dal flour till just about for a you know 2 or 3 seconds till it starts to uh, change color and i'm going to add this to my puna then i'm going to mix it very well and i'm going to add about a cup of water and give everything a nice mix now this time your ch your kitchen will be really really having you know some beautiful aromas of all the lovely spices that we've used today in this recipe and uh, now i'm going to add the kasuri methi just crush it up you know before putting it just crush it up between your fingers and just put it into that and uh, mix everything very well this kasuri methi also really really you know elevates the taste of this dish then i'm going to cover and keep this for 2 3 2 2 3 minutes now the chicken is really well marinated so i'm just going to heat oil about a tablespoon of oil in a pan and i'm going to fry the chicken really well till it has this you know lovely kind of a tandoori a little bit of a charred look uh and uh, just keep turning them till it has a nice you know it's cooked evenly and all the masala is really you know got into the chicken and once it's cooked just transfer it into uh, a bowl and then you can do the same with the remaining chicken and now that our puna is all ready all we have to do is just add these chicken pieces into the puna mix everything well add your lemon juice after you've switched off the flame of course and then just garnish with some coriander and your lovely puna chicken is all ready to enjoy <laughs> Here I've just soaked some red chilies, washed them, uh, cut off the tips, and again soaked them in some water uh, for about five to ten minutes. Now all the other ingredients that we need are as follows: we require about one inch of ginger, which I've just chopped up into smaller pieces, fifteen cloves of garlic, fifteen peppercorns. 1 tablespoon of cumin seeds or jeera about 6 cloves or lavang 1 inch of cinnamon or dalchini half a teaspoon of rye or mustard seeds or mohri half a teaspoon of haldi or turmeric powder about 2 tablespoons of vinegar and some salt to taste and these are the soaked red chilies so now we're going to grind all of these ingredients in our mixer we're not going to add any water at all and we are going to grind it to a very very fine paste you can transfer the paste to a bowl and reserve the water for using later Now we're just going to put this paste onto 400 grams of meat. Now I am using chicken. You can use mutton or you can use uh, pork, and you can keep this aside for 12 hours. It has to be marinated for at least 12 hours. Now after 12 hours, we're going to heat about four tablespoons of oil in a pan, and I'm going to fry four medium-sized onions till they're nice and golden brown in color. Now I'm going to add the marinated meat along with all of this lovely masala. We're going to fry this extremely well. I'm just going to add one slit light green chili, and now I'm going to add the reserve water that we had uh, uh, set aside yesterday. or about 12 hours before and we're going to mix everything together now you can give this a little taste just to see if you want to adjust the salt or the vinegar and then i'm going to add about 1 and 1/2 cup of hot water and then we're going to let this simmer for at least 15 to 20 minutes and there our vindalu is all ready i like to have it with some soft pav or some goan rice
let me know in the comments box how you like today's recipe. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up by clicking on the thumbs up icon. I need those thumbs ups. And also if you haven't subscribed to my channel then please do and uh, hit the red subscribe button that you see below this video. Once you have subscribed, a little bell icon will show up, click that because that way whenever I put up a new recipe, you get a message for the same. Type the recipe you're looking for and immediately type Akshata's recipes and my recipe will pop up first. For instance, if you're looking for vanilla ice cream with three ingredients, just type vanilla ice cream, Akshata's recipe and mine will be the first. So that's the way to find me on YouTube. So much for watching today's video and being a part of my channel. Take care of you, uh, take care of yourselves, guys. Stay safe. In my next video, sooner than you think, I'm signing off. Take care. Bye.